Welcome to the inaugural episode of Three Way Thursdays, a show where we fix three tiny things that individually don't deserve a spotlight, but together form a beautiful triangle of productivity. It's fast, it's weird, and yes, the name was absolutely a mistake, but now it's branding, so we can't change it. So for today's task, we bravely attended an estate sale because nothing says, please touch my belongings, like a folding table in a stranger's garage, and we found a Radio Shack toy called the Executive Stress Eliminator. It doesn't work, obviously. There's battery acid swirling around inside it like it's hosting a little chemical jacuzzi. But listen, I have stress, and I would like to eliminate it executively. And to achieve that, we've armed ourselves with extra strength vinegar, which smells like ambition and salad murder, and a toothbrush my dentist gave me as a constellation prize. We need to open up this toy to reach the battery compartment and, oh look, only two screws, that's that's cool. Inside, it's crustier than a $5 buffet, but the circuit board looks mostly fine, which is how I describe myself to others. There's a little sad blue wire just dangling in the void like it's waiting for a call from its agent. That'll need to be reattached, obviously. So I pour a little shot of vinegar like I'm about to do a frat prank for science and I scrub the battery contacts with a toothbrush I didn't want. I get my teeth cleaned every four months. I don't know why, but maybe I'm anxious. And they always give me a new bag of teeth stuff. I've got enough dental gear to open up a pop kiosk at the mall, but today it finds purpose because you never know when you'll need to brush acid off a Reagan-era novelty toy that screams at you when you're upset. It takes several spirited rounds of scrubbing before the battery contacts look like they've seen the light. Then we move on to the actual repair. The blue wire, while fashionable, is no longer attached to anything. And you know how they say to cut the blue wire when you're diffusing a bomb? Yeah, we're, we're not cutting it. We're reattaching it, which is arguably more stressful. I try scratching the contact like I'm getting paid for doing it, but no dice. So I sand it down in preparation for a dramatic soldering scene. This is where things go south. You're about to witness what I call the five stages of soldering. Denial, 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 swearing, and a new wire. Because plot twist, battery acid travels. You know that blue wire? It's been internally dissolved. I unscrew the board, except, of course, that there's one screw that thinks it's better than the others. And I have to break out my vamp pliers. They swoop in like a tiny metal Batman to save the day. Once we examine the wire, it's obvious the battery acid went full journey to the center of the earth and fried it from the inside. So we find a new blue wire in my magical box of leftover wire noodles. Uh, It's too long, because of course it is. So we cut it in half like a magician doing a trick that nobody asked for. Now, soldering the new wire should be easy, except the pad is like, no thank you. I would clean it with vinegar, but we used all of that up last night making a salad that tasted like a science fair. So instead, I just solder it directly to the leg of a nearby capacitor. And will that capacitor mind? Nope. He's cool. He's vibing. Uh, Back to the battery compartment. Solder goes well. Everything looks fantastic. And now we get to the big moment. Testing. But wait, how do you press a button when the button isn't there? Answer. You borrow one. Then you just start pressing things like you're trying to unlock a cheat code. We reassemble the unit gently, politely, screw everything back into place, and it's finally back in one piece wearing its fake wood grain like a prom tux. The executive stress eliminator lives again. How'd you like that? But wait, there's more. Three-way Thursday, yeah! So we own this broken Numatron Bitcoin ticker. (laughs) 
And no, I didn't make that word up. It sounds like a steampunk euphemism for farting, but it's real. We bought it from CryptoCables.com, which is either a legitimate business or the front for a surprisingly tech-savvy mongoose. It worked great for a while, until one day it just decided to display garbage. Not like emotional garbage, literal garbage values, like the number 8 exploded and was trying to spell out help. I open it up because that's what I do. I can't leave broken electronics alone. It's a compulsion. Like biting your nails or watching YouTube videos at 2 a.m. about how to properly season a cast iron pan. Inside I find this sketchy little USB power supply that looks like it was built during a power outage. I plug in a good USB adapter and not surprisingly the ticker works. Which is great, but also insulting like... Oh, I'm the problem? Me and my trash USB plug? So I do what any normal person would do. I void the warranty and start replacing things. Step one, I grab a Molex connector so I can install a clean, detachable power connection. Because guess what? We're not hardwiring AC power like it's 1947. We've evolved. We have options. True, we have regrets, but we also have options. Now, I need to figure out which wire is neutral. It's the thick prong on the plug, and I only know that because I've shocked myself before and learned through pain. I pull out my voltmeter and start playing, is it live, the home game. I test the wires, make my best guess, and then immediately second guess my best guess. <laughs> Eventually, I get a new USB board. It's one of those Amazon specials that looks like it could either power your project or burn down your house, depending on the humidity. It takes AC power in, spits out 5 volts like a champion, and has a USB port so it feels friendly. I get to crimping. I love to crimp. It's like arts and crafts, but with sparks and consequences. I slide on some shrink tubing, which is incredibly satisfying, by the way. It's like watching someone tuck in a burrito. I hit it with a heat gun and feel like a wizard who has chosen a very niche path of magic. I do the same thing on the other side. Plug it all into the Molex. And suddenly we're cooking with electricity that probably won't kill us. Now here's the thing. I'm not showing you the black hot wire being built because I want you to believe it just happened. Like a miracle. Like the Molex fairy showed up and said, You've done enough. Go take a nap. We slap the connectors together. Boom! It's a plug. You can now disconnect power like a civilized person instead of just yanking wires and hoping the lack of smoke means you're good. I plug in our newly wired USB and praise be, it powers up. The ticker boots. The lights flicker. The world spins. We did not destroy it. This is like the part in the hospital drama where they shout, We have a pulse! Except our patient is a Bitcoin price display that has no insurance. And then, the reveal. The Bitcoin price scrolls across. $118,000. What? That can't be right. But also, I hope it is because my retirement plan is mostly just old video games and misplaced optimism. Now I shove all the guts back into the display case like I'm dressing a roast chicken. We button everything up, power it back on, dim the lights to set the mood, and kablam! Bitcoin's price has already dropped a thousand bucks, because of course it has. But did we have fun? Yes. Did we learn anything? Not really, but I love these weird little displays. You can show prices, followers, stress levels, number of unread emails, just raw blinking proof that the world is on fire. But this one's mine. It's working again. Thumbs up. Panic neutralized. Time for snacks. And now, finally, the last bit of Dragon's Lair we did not fix for your enjoyment. Our Dragon's Lair scoreboard is showing the letter F when it should be completely blank, like a microwave that's unplugged or my face during high school math. Today's goal is simple. Fix the scoreboard without destroying it and then play a quick sad game, which sounds like every date I went on in 2006. So I pull out the whole game just to get to the scoreboard PCB, which, by the way, is held in place by exactly one cable and two screws. It's like someone assembled this with the confidence of a man who says, that's good enough, and then just walks away forever. Lucky us. We peer through the window of the display like we're spying on our X at Target as we formulate our plan. We're going to take two 1K resistors, wire them in exactly like shown here, and pray super hard. This is our board. I've marked the little dots where I'm going to touch things. And, and when I say touch, I mean I'm going to poke a 600 degree metal stick at these exact points. Next I open the package I got from Amazon. Inside, 
1,000 resistors. That's right, a full spice rack of electrical mayhem. I only need two. So naturally, I now own 998 tiny metal regrets. I carefully extract the chosen resistors and then pretend the third one that flew across the room like a popcorn kernel didn't happen. Looking at the board again, I know my work is cut out for me. I hold it like it's a golden goose's egg and whisper, uh, please don't die. But then I notice something. There's a capacitor that can be replaced. So I stroll over to my trusted drawer of capacitors, which is not organized by voltage or size, but by chaos theory. And I pull out one mark, 470 microfarads, like a guy in a heist film who says, this one will do, even though he has no idea how safes work. We finally get that crusty capacitor off the board after only a few minutes of light wrangling, and by wrangling I mean I was one move away from calling it names and storming off. I look down at the board to check if I've torn it apart like a toddler with a library book, and to my surprise I have not. Good for me. Gold star. We slot in the new capacitor and bend it over like that one cousin who peaked in high school and still brings it up at family functions. Then it's time for solder paste, nature's way of saying, you sure about this? I slap some onto the board like I know what I'm doing and move on to the resistor. <laughs> this resistor is sitting there like, you sure you want me? And I'm like, no. But you're the one Amazon sent, so let's go. I add a little more solder because it makes me feel safe. And now it's time for the wire. Not the TV show, the actual real life wire. It's weirdly thin like emotionally and it does not want to stay put. I hate it. I hate this wire. But we persevere because we're adults with highly specific sets of skills. I check my work again like I'm going to catch it cheating on a test and decide to slap one of the resistors on the board. I look at my printed diagram and confidently place one leg down like I'm pitching a tent in the dark. But then, surprise! It's too long! Of course it is! So I create a second connection point because why make one mistake when you can make two? Don't answer that. Solder paste again because now we're trauma bonding. Finally it holds. Time for resistor number two. Electric boogaloo. This time I'm ready mentally, legally. I attach it to the right pin and the correct chunk of the board like a very slow, very confused electrician. Out comes the voltmeter because I want to know, have I bridged any connections? Did I do a bad voltmeter? says no volt meter is my friend more solder paste goes on the capacitor legs and things are finally behaving i trim the legs because i'm a barber now and then i immediately throw them away carefully so i don't step on them later because i always will if they're on the floor that's my lot in life i sit back and admire my work i've done it except i haven't because the blue wire, the one I soldered earlier with pride and fanfare, that was wrong. It's bad. Into the shame pile it goes. I grab the other half of the earlier blue wire and try again. Then I realize that resistor one is also in the wrong spot. Of course it is. Do I show you a close-up of this mistake? No, I do not. Because I respect myself enough to lie to you. Finally, I take the board, I plug it in, I turn off the lights like it's a magic show, and bam! The scoreboard no longer shows the dreaded letter F when it's supposed to be blank. It's finally behaving like a normal, well-adjusted scoreboard. I feel amazing. I feel like a genius, like I should be knighted or given a gift basket. We close the cabinet, we lock it up, and then, because I'm feeling generous, I guess I'll show you that it works. Here we go. Okay, it's booting up. It says DL something. I'm sure that stands for Dragon Slayer. Uh-huh, we're, oh, look at that, display is blank, and it says we have two credits. We did it, everybody, we're smart, and I, you know, I'll give you the link that had the solution. I didn't come up with it on my own. All right, let's play a quick game. Let's see if it works. Here we go. Yeah, oh, look at that, it's nice blank. I love, I love it. All right, here we go, here we go. Shh, shh, shh.
So that concludes Three Way Thursday. If you liked it, like us. If you want to subscribe, you should. And hit that notification bell to be annoyed. But very briefly. <laughs>